Hello everybody, my name is Maxim and I am from Kojic T. In this video, we will create an issue tracker application just from scratch. The result we want to achieve looks like this. Here we have the main page of our issue tracker application and where you can indicate different details. And let's check out the way our application works. Let's name our issue. For example, program does not work. Then we can describe our problem and add some extra file if needed. Afterwards, we indicate a submission date, which is automatically today. Then we can indicate the project name or create a new one. Afterwards, the state of the issue, automatically it's new and priority, let it be minor. And we can indicate the person who reported the issue and who is assigned to this issue. After we save our issue, we can see that it is displayed in such a comfortable table where all the issues will be displayed and you will be easily able to manage them. And right now, let's try to create this application from scratch by ourselves. We click on Create New App from our dashboard. Let's name our application as Issue Tracking. We choose a blank app template and we press on create application. Let's just wait for some time until the app is generated. The app was created and right now to start making our application, let's press on develop button and move to our app builder. The first thing we need to do is to create a web page for our application. And to do this, just click on the button Add Page. Let's name this one as Issue, where the user will describe the issue. Create. And right now, we are ready to customize our issue web page. First thing we will do is we will just split the screw box in two, make the left one a bit wider, and we will add a bit of static text. The first one is going to be issue info, just in this way. And the second one is going to be issue details. Issue details, just like that. Created it. Right now, let's add some separators to this page and to this group box. And we are ready to add some fields to our web page. So the first ones are going to be header, description, and this file field. We just add some text input to our web page. As for the header, let's name it as header, create it, and let's add some multi line text just in this way. And we will call this one description. Let's go to the appearance folder and change its size from 2 to 12. And we will also add a file field, upload file, and just drag it right here. And let's call it just file, create it. And let's make our header field a required one so that the user will not be able to save the issue without entering some information about this field. We go to validation and put a tick on required. To add a submission date option, we can drag a special date field to our web page. Just in this way, let's call it submission date and create it. Let's also make it as a required option, just like that. Right now, we should add those projects, say, priority and others fields. However, those are not just regular fields. Those are drop-down lists where the user can choose some of the predefined options or can create a new one. The way we do this is just go to components and drag a select field to our page, just in this way, and let's call it project, create it. The next one is going to be our state field. Let's at first add a separator to our web page. 
and the next one is gonna be again select but it's gonna be state created and the difference between the state and the project one is that as you can see state only offers some three options without um, any possibility for user to create a new one the way you add such predefined options is just by clicking plus in here and let's add the first state which is going to be new save and close the next one is going to be in process in process and the third one is going to be salt save and close However, we should also make user not be able to create some new options of our state. The way we do this, we just edit our state field and go to the options of create new action and just put tick, choose, don't show, create new. And in this way, the user will not be able to make any changes to these predefined options. And the same thing is going to be done for our priority field. Let's just do it in this way. Priority, create, and let's add those predefined options. Um, minor, for example. The next one is going to be normal. And the next one is going to be major save and close let's also make our create new action not appear to the user for our priority drop down list just in this way and let's add our reported by and assign to fields let's at first add a group box split it in two and let's add our drop down list. Drag this one in here. Let it be reported by. And the second one is going to be right here. Assigned to. Let's also make some fields required, which is going to be project. Then the state is going to be required. And our reported by and assigned to just in this way. And we just finished with the layout of our web page. And right now, let's try to add some actions to our application. To add some actions to our web page, we should move to the data type of our web page. Just let's do it in this way and move to the folder called blocks the action we're gonna add right now is code loaded which is responsible for um, some actions for filling some automatic data when we when the page is just loaded so let's add such action let's choose load it and create it what we want to achieve is an automatic date which is today so whenever the user creates a new issue um, the submission date is automatically set for today and whenever he creates a new issue its state is automatically new the way we do this let's at first create an automatic state for our state field at first we need to get our new instance our new predefined option to do this, we can go to fetch instance option, choose our state type, and choose new right from here, just in this way. Let's call this variable new. And the next thing we're going to do, we're going to set to this issue that user creates, which is item in our case, and to the field state, we're going to set it and uh, our new instance our new variable that we just fetched and the next thing we want to do we want to set an automatic submission date which is going to be today 
the way we do this, we should at first um, get our function now for our date selected and we should connect it to our issue submission date. We should go to our item variable, which is some submission, which is some issue, choose submission date, set it. We set it to our now function, which um, takes some time zone as an argument, and we will use a built-in function get browser time zone, which gets receives the information from your web browser to get your current time zone just in this way. Right now, let's save our code and publish our application to see the result that we just got. Our application has just been published. Let's open it to see the result of our application. And as you can see, we have our issue tracking application with all of the fields with some actions on it. And let's try to add the first issue. For example, program does not work just in this way. Let's create some new project. Let it be the first project. Save it. Then the state is automatically new. Let's set some priority and let's choose, let's create a person. So it was reported by Maxim Kirvan. Save and close and assign to, um, let it be John Hopkins. Just in this way, we save it. And right now let's save and close our issue and it is comfortably located in this table. This was all for today's video. We created a basic issue tracking application. And if you had any questions during this video, you can ask them in our support department, or you can watch our instructional videos where we explain each topic with some more details and more explanations. I think you got a bit acquainted with our app builder. Thank you for watching. Bye.